Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Steven, and today I'm talking about Black Adam. Black Adam is a long time coming superhero movie from DC and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I was hesitant about Dwayne Johnson's casting as Black Adam, because while he uses charm, he isn't exactly known for his versatility. Like 99% of his movies, I was worried he was just gonna be The Rock. Safe to say, I was pleasantly surprised by his portrayal. Yeah, but let's get into it. So the movie opens with the backstory of the ancient city of Kandak, I could be saying it wrong, and how Black Adam, known throughout the movie as Teth Adam, came to be. It's covered pretty quickly, which I like, and even features a 300-esque slow motion pitfall. So we get to present day, and as usual with this type of genre, we have two groups seeking an ancient artifact, this time a crown worn by a king from that earlier time, which is made of this rare gem, Eternium. So this element, Eternium, is kind of what Kryptonite is to Superman, nullifying Black Adam's powers, making him vulnerable. While seeking the crown, Teth Adam is awakened, and we get quite a treat with the action sequences that follow. For being rated PG-13, we get a decent array of deaths. This first appearance from Teth Adam is particularly brutal, from being vaporized to being ripped in half. Yeah, he's a killing machine and it definitely makes that clear. There's also the slow motion sequence, not too far off from the Quicksilver scene in X-Men, which is done pretty well and quite fun. Yeah, actually, all the action is done really well and once it starts, it doesn't let up. I didn't find there to be any dull moments in particular, especially once the Justice Society shows up, which is just after Teth Adams' first appearance. Yeah, the Justice Society of America consisted of Pierce Brosnan's Dr. Fate, Aldous Hodge's Hawkman, you have Cyclone, and Adam Smasher. Pierce Brosnan was an excellent addition to this DCEU, and I wish we could have more time of his Dr. Fate in the future. Hawkman is the wealthy leader of the Justice Society, and kind of portrayed as an asshole albeit a cool one. We also get a light-hearted rookie, Adam Smasher, who was pretty fun to follow. And Cyclone's wind powers look cool visually, but I think these element-manipulating heroes are probably my least favorite. But I thought the CGI looked pretty great in this movie. The flying looked natural, and the lightning looked legit. Backed by an epic score, this movie definitely delivered on the action. Yeah, a lot of the action sequences were creatively shot and looked like they could have been ripped directly from a comic panel. And Dwayne Johnson's portrayal, as I said before, was actually not too bad. Unlike some other superhero movies, this isn't a story written around a bunch of punchlines. The jokes are pretty few and I felt that they landed from The Rock because of that. For the most part. Yeah, but as a fault, the story itself is nothing new. It's quite cliche, but nobody really sees a superhero movie like this for its creative writing. That would be left for the more grounded renditions. Probably the least enjoyable things about this movie were anything with the mother and son. Their acting was pretty unconvincing and the line delivery left a lot to be desired. Especially when the boy is trying to rally its citizens. Yikes. Overall, for letter grade, I'd give this movie a C+. Plus. Forget the critics, it's a lot of fun, loaded with well shot action, and I had a great time watching it. I find it funny that the audience scores are always higher than the critic scores for DC movies, and usually the opposite for Marvel, so just a little peculiar. But if you're not convinced yet to watch it, there's a mid credit scene that has huge implications for the future, and that's worth it alone. It left me with a lot of hope for the future of the DCEU. Alright guys, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and as usual, I'll see you on the next review.